Welcome to Excel metric number 977. If you want to download this workbook 976 to 977, click on the link below the video. In this video, we have some stocks and then some days and uh, values for the stock. And we need to look up the first price for each stock and then look up the last. Now, I have done videos exactly on this topic, but I got to show you something great uh, in class uh, yesterday, Advanced Excel. Joyce and April came up with a great method for doing this. So here's the way that uh, I was showing them in class. Uh, index function. Well, we're looking up. We're looking up what stuff here? Relative cell reference, comma. And we need a row number. Well, we really need a column number. But the row number serves as either column or row number when it's a one-way lookup array. So we can use this right here. And what are we interested in? Well, we're really interested in this first one. And what's different about this than that cell? Or here, this one, how is that different than all these? Well, these are all empty, and this one's not empty, right? So not empty. I want to look that up and figure out what, what uh, position it is. It's two here, um, one here, for example. So we use the match function. Now, the trick to this is, is the lookup array. We are going to highlight these. But if I'm interested in the first one that's not empty, I'm going to use the not. I'm going to do an array calculation here on that range. I'm going to do the not less than, greater than, and then say use the syntax for empty, double quote, double quote. That gives me a series. That's a comparative operator. It's doing an operation on more than one item. So this is an array calculation. It will. This formula will require Control Shift Enter because that's an array operation there. But if I highlight it and hit F9, you can see it gives me trues and falses. Well, what am I interested in? I'm interested in that one there, the first true. All right. So two things. One is we now want to put our lookup value for match as true. Control Z. I'm going to put that there. True. Then it's going to find it here. But because there's duplicates, we have to be very careful. The, the third argument, we have to select exact match, which is 0. Because guess what? If you do exact match and there's duplicate, it takes the first one. So I'm going to put a 0. And that is close parentheses. I could highlight this and just check it, F9 keyed it, and boom, it got it, the 2. Control Z. Now, close parentheses, if you just enter it, it gives you a value error because what? We did an array operation. That's an operation on more than one item, an array. That lookup array argument is not specifically programmed to handle array calculations. So you have to tell Excel that this is an array calculation by using Control Shift and Enter. Oops, I'm not. I'm going to Control Z and copy down. Now that's the way I usually teach. But check this out, Joyce and April, in class live. They were telling me what to do, and I was doing it in the front of the room. They said, "Well, how about we just do index, highlight uh, that range right there. That's our lookup range." And sure enough, we'll use match, not math, match. And comma, how about for the lookup array we use is blank? And is blank is programmed to say true when the thing is empty. So no problem. We'll highlight that whole range, close parentheses. And I'm going to highlight this right here and hit the F9 key. Oh, well, true is not what I want, but false is. And it's the first false that I want. So Control Z. I'm going to come here, and I'm going to be looking up false. So the lookup value is false. It'll find it within there. That is an array calculation. And what's doing the calculation? Not a math operator, not a comparative operator, but the function itself, right? We highlighted it and hit F9. We can see that the function, because we gave it a range, is delivering more than one item. So that is an array calculation, Control Z, comma, 0. The 0 helps us with the duplicates. We want the first one, close parentheses, close parentheses. If I hit Enter, not available. If I copy down, not going to work. But if I Control Shift Enter, it gives me the right answer. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful.
uh, everyone in the class got extra points because of Joyce and April's cool uh, slight variation. And of course, the moral of the story is what? There's almost never just one way to do things in Excel. And you know, if you're looking at both of these, they're both about the same. I can't think of uh, any advantages or disadvantages over one or the other. Maybe someone out there does, and they can post a comment down below. That well, looks like I almost forgot. Control Shift Enter. Let's do the last. Now, whereas this one used exact match this zero to find the first when there's duplicates, we can use approximate match lookup to find the last. Now, the approximate match is the same for VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, LOOKUP, and MATCH. So I'm going to use LOOKUP here. Now LOOKUP only does approximate match. It can't do exact match. Now I'm going to skip over the LOOKUP value and just give it this LOOKUP range right here. And this is a one-way uh, LOOKUP uh, vector here, right? This isn't a, the two-way array down here. But this LOOKUP vector. Well, there's a bunch of numbers there. And the way approximate works is if you give it a lookup value bigger than any number, it'll always get the last one. So the trick is you just got to pick a number big enough. Now, if your stocks are never going to be over you know, 1,000 bucks, put 5,000 or 10,000. But I'm going to put 9.99e plus 307. That's an approximation of the biggest number that Excel can handle. So that's overkill, but it'll always get the last one. All right, Control Enter. And then uh, copy it down. All right, so it got the last one there, last, last, first and last. And of course, boom, that is beautiful. All right, we'll see you next trick.